Today's sponsors are Angelo's Interiors, specialising in kitchens, bedrooms and bathrooms. Go and visit their showroom today in Gillingham. Their web address is angelosinteriors.com and Dimidishi Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. Welcome to the Cherrywood Podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. <laughs> That's Lou Pieri, take one. I'm like that. Like a pro. There you go. Hang up there, then people go. can see your name. People can see your name. Go on the sign. Go on the sign. Yeah. Oh, oh a bit higher. That's not working. There we there go. We go. <laughs> there we go. Natalie Pierre, accounting connection. Sorry, Rach. <laughs> <H. laughs> <laughs> Today, you're straight in the face while you're I'm drinking. Not having a good day. Before we start, <laughs> how long? Mm, five minutes, 37 seconds. For anyone listening, only <laughs> listening, when I say how long, I mean before the sign. <laughs> Before the sign falls off, nothing rude, nothing rude, but she knows how long that is. Four anyway. inches. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> right, where are you and where'd you come from? That sounds like something from a game show. Yeah. Uh, my name is Natalie Pieri. Uh, my company is Accounting Connections. I am a chartered certified accountant for my sins. Um, this year, I will have been in the accounting industry for 20 years. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's weird, weird. And you're still there. That's amazing. <laughs> what, in your own capacity? I, in my own uh, business as Accounting Connections, um, we're in our 10th year. So right. um, 1st of December will be 10 years to the day I started the business. Wow. Um, Excellent. So, yeah. So, for half of my professional life, I've worked for myself. <laughs> Blimey. <laughs> Don't know whether that uh, that leans to being unmanageable or not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're recording this around the start of uh, February. So um, you're on holiday now, then? Absolutely. Two, <laughs> two months of just <laughs> kicking back and chilling and having lunches and coming to do podcasts. And you know, then, I've got time to do this stuff now. And then another ten months of telling people um, get, your taxes, get yeah. your taxes in. Get your taxes in. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't leave it last minute. Don't leave yeah. it last minute. We always have. There's always that small list of repeat offenders. Every year we know who is going to leave it until january regardless of how many times during the year you're like you're going to send me stuff early this year and they're like yeah i'm definitely not going to be that person next year I'm definitely, <laughs> it's definitely not going to be me um and then every january when i call them they're like it's me again isn't it? <laughs> yes yes it's you again <laughs> <laughs> so would you recommend doing it as soon as possible or well yeah because if you think about it tax year runs april to april and then you've got until the end of january to get everything filed and paid that's 10 months right mm. so people yeah. that leave it till the last minute and then say to hmrc oh i couldn't get on the system or you know i i have broke my arm or my computer broke down you've had 10 months before that point to get it done yeah so that's why hmrc have a really you know they're, they're quite tight they're like mm. look you've had 10 months like yeah. you know yes your dog might have died or your nan might have died this month yeah. but you've had nine months before this yeah. to get it sorted i think some people think if they leave it last minute then it's giving them less time to yeah and that's, it not, it that's not the case because yeah. the, the time that they start reviewing is actually um after the deadline so regardless of when you put it in it doesn't mean that you they've got any more or less time to review your case right um yeah, and like I say, if you think about it, especially like there's a lot of people out there that work CIS, okay? So they get their ta tax deducted at source. Right, explain By CIS the time, to me. I'm, okay, I'm so crap. Let's, you know how crap I am. Well, let, <laughs> let's, say, let's say you earn 20 grand a year, Yeah. okay? And of that 20 grand, you're going to get deducted 20% on the whole 20 yes, grand. Yes, yes, yeah. Every person in the UK has a personal allowance. At the moment, it's £12,570. Yes, so yeah. for that amount of money that you've earned, that should have been tax-free. Yes. So you've paid too much tax in the year. I see. So as soon as you put your tax return in, you say, look, I earned 20000 this year. This is how much CIS tax I've paid. Um, and But this is how much CIS tax I owe. Uh, this is how much income tax I owe, which will be a lot less than the CIS tax you've paid. You'll be due the money back. So mm. the sooner you get the return in, the sooner you get your money back. Yeah. It's as yeah. simple as that. Um, Very true. Similarly... If you've got a tax liability, if you know what you've got to pay in May and you've got until the end of January to pay it, you've got all that time to save up, to, to make a plan. If you yeah. haven't already put it aside, then you've got time to put it together. Mm. Whereas if you find out on the 25th of January that you've got a three grand tax bill and then you've got less than a week to pay it, like, yeah, that's very you true. know, <laughs> it's, it's like shooting yourself in the foot, really. But yeah. 
I say year in, year out, same people. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've done that maybe a few times. Sorry? We left it late, haven't we? we, we, we Do you it. feel personally attacked right now? <laughs> no, no. no we leave it. We leave it a little bit late, but we're not too bad, I don't we've, think. We've done it once or twice yeah. in January, and we think, oh, not, yeah. not next year, not next year. And we always we always get it wrong, and all. what my prediction is always wrong. We try on, our On my hardest. Excel sheet, yeah. We try our hardest. Not I've, by I've far. changed the term nagging, so a lot of people think that we nag them for their records, and I changed that because I don't like the sound of nagging, uh, because it has lots of negative connotations. So I say, I don't nag, I remind with authority. <laughs> that is what I do. I, I remind, might say that to the kids. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I am not nagging, I am reminding with authority. You know what you're meant to do. I'm just reminding you again, in a stern way, <laughs> to do it. To <laughs> right, so um, how did you get to this wonderful, fascinating world of dealing with people's figures? <laughs> That because sounds wrong. I was a Accounting. really strange child. All right, okay. Yeah. At 10 years old, so year six at school, last year of junior school, when uh, you had one computer in the whole school that got wheeled into your classroom, and the, the, back, the back of it was like this, and the screen was tiny, um, there was this 100-question, multiple-choice, like, aptitude test. I think the program was called Kudos, but it wouldn't hold me to that. Um, that rings a bell. Yeah. But you answered all these hundred questions, multiple choice questions. And at the end, it then gave you a list of all the jobs you were suited for ah. with the most suitable at the top. So and you the took it literally. The well, the top of the list came up auditor. Oh, right, okay. okay. Being 10 years old, I had absolutely no idea what an auditor was. Mm. So um, I said to my dad, I was like, dad, what's an auditor? Because apparently I'm meant to be one when I'm older. <laughs> Uh, and he was like, oh, well, auditors are accountants that people don't like. So if you want to be liked, go be an accountant. Don't be an auditor. He went, in fact, you're good at maths. Go be an accountant. So that was it. Oh. Every decision I made from that point in time was with a view to being an accountant. And that's what I did. Wow. Mm. And so you literally took his words yes. seriously. And that's went, I'm what kids do, do didn't they? Yeah. When they complete trust of their parents. My mum said, you need to go and get an apprenticeship. Yeah. All right, then. Yeah, I'll go and get an apprenticeship. <laughs> I'm still <Yeah>. there. <laughs> As an apprentice. Yeah, I'm still an apprentice, yeah. I'm still at the same place. Um, so. But yeah, so that's what I did. Every decision I made um, from there on was to be an accountant. And wow. then I went, um, so when all my friends were doing their, well, I went to a grammar school. So they dedicate whole lessons when you're in sixth form to doing your UCAS application. Oh, yeah. So as that. soon as you say, oh, I'm actually, I'm not going to university. They're like, they kick what? you out, don't they? You're like ostracized. <laughs> they <shun> you are. <laughs> it's like these whole lessons where everyone's sitting and doing these forms. They're like, well, you don't have to do a form, so you can go and amuse yourself somewhere else, I guess. And, and it's like, like oh, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, 18 years old, I wrote a CV. I mean, the CV was literally, I'd done some work at New Look and I'd worked <laughs> as a, a waitress at Gillingham Football Club, done a bit of work at Tesco. So, that was pretty much all I had done. Jewels, I you? worked in the shop and I did a little bit in the bar. Oh, I can't even remember. It turned into a club, didn't it? I can't remember what it was what, called. The, oh, the piano bar? Yes. Oh, right, yeah, okay. that was it. Yeah. So I worked in there for a little bit as well. Oh, so. yeah. So clearly where all the best people go to yeah. work. So. <laughs> Yeah, clearly, yeah. yeah. I but loved I, um, it. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a CV and I wrote a cover letter, printed it out, and um, it was back in the day of Yell.com. Right. And yeah. I did a Yell.com search for accountants in Medway. And I sent out 40 letters, literally hand-wrote envelopes, 40 Aww. letters, stamped them, stuck them in the box. Um, I only, Of those 40 letters, I only got six replies. Of those six replies, four said, thanks, but we're not looking for anybody. Mm. Uh, and two of them said, come in for a chat. Um, so went in for a chat. Um, and one of them, actually, the, the company that gave me my very first shot at being an accountant was a company called Thompson & Co. Uh, mm. And my, my maiden name's Thompson. Uh -huh. Uh, no, absolutely no relation to me, this guy. Um, but I just thought it was a sign. I was yeah. like, I have to be here. This, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the, he was really nice and friendly. And he was, you know, looking to invest in making me an accountant. Mm. Um, so I went with it. No. And uh, mm. yeah, so and he has been my mentor even up until recently. He's mm. still, well, I say he's retired. No accountant ever really retires, <laughs> to be no. perfectly no. honest. Everyone has the question, can you just? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So was it him that gave you the push to do it, go on your own, or was it because he had sort of... No, I um, I am one of the many millennials walking around uh, with undiagnosed ADHD. <laughs> so oh. I um, I get very bored very quickly if something yeah. is not uh, stimulating me. Mm. So um, I stayed with Thompson & Co. about, I don't know, 18 months, two years. But it was 
I was doing a lot of admin right. as well as accounting. And I was like, do you know what? I wanted to be an accountant. I didn't want to be an administrator. Mm-hmm. I'm going to push forward to something else where I can do some more accounting. Mm-hmm. So moved to the next firm, got a bit more accounting exposure, a bit of audit exposure. And then I was like, bored here now. I'm going to move somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Did got a bit more exposure. So I moved around um, quite a few different places. Also did a stint of uh, accounting in co- what we call accounting in commerce. So what I do now is accounting in practice where I deal with accounts and tax returns for multiple different businesses. Accounting in commerce is when like, you go to work for one big company and you work in their internal finance right, department. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and as expected, really monotonous. Like mm. y- you have what we call a working day cycle. So on because calendar days, like the first of the month might fall on a Sunday. So it's mm-hmm. not the first working day of the month. It's just the first calendar day of the month, right? So we have, so on working day one, working day five, working day 10, you knew exactly what you was going to be doing on those mm. days. It just became so repetitive, yeah, mm. nuts, boring. Was, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I got to that point in that job where I was like, I really need something else. I need to go back into practice. Clearly, this isn't stimulating me enough. Yeah. Um, and um, somebody I knew at the time was starting up a, an accountancy firm. Well, he had he had started it up with with a colleague and. Um, he wasn't a uh, an accountant himself, but he had he had some accounting experience. It was the other lady that worked with him that was the accountant, but she was looking to move away and do something else. And he was like, "I need somebody else to come join me." Mm. So I was like, "Yeah, okay, let's do it." So um, I kind of went with him. We changed the name of the company to Accounting Connections. Kind of mm. born then on the first of December, uh, two thousand and fourteen, um, and then about six months in, he realised, you know. He was more an estate agent than an accountant, right. so he. I said, "Look, you, you got your account, uh, your um, estate agency. Go and do that. I'll take the reins here and take it forward." Um, so since then, that's what I've done. So oh, mm. that's amazing. Mm. So you must have enjoyed maths? <laughs> Question mark. <What? laughs> this is the funny thing, right? It's a really common misconception that in order to be a good accountant, you have to be good at maths. Mm. It's nine. Like, I want to say ninety percent of what I do is logic and problem solving. Oh, mm. right, okay. Because, mm. yeah, everyone would assume that being an accountant, you yeah. must be good at maths, yeah. right? Everyone yeah. must say that. Oh, it's really <laughs> annoying when you go out for dinner with a big group of people and then when the bill comes and everyone looks at you and, like, yeah. you're the accountant. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> everyone has a calculator on their phone. Like, <laughs> just because I, I know how to work the UK tax system doesn't mean that I'm Rain Man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You don't have it all yeah. that deep. Right, okay, so that's £28 per person. Yeah. <laughs> So what what have you done to stop being bored? Because um, you're still in the same industry. I know you own, am, the, own it now. The so what is, is that, it that's keeping you um, going? And <laughs> I guess that I can pick and choose, can't I? You know, yeah. when you're when you're running your, or they're saying that working for yourself is always a fallacy. Mm. <laughs> When you're employed, you work for a boss. When you're self-employed, you work for your customers. You work yeah, of course. Boss, yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're never really doing what you want to do. It's just your boss doing. changes all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, my boss is such a cow. She never lets me have any time off. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just, it's just about, do you know what? I think it's just the range of clients I have coming in where I certain accountants um, niche in an area, um, which is great for them because, you know, then you're a specialist in a certain area and everybody from that field will will be drawn to you because you do it day in, day out and know what you're doing. Um, I'm more like the general practitioner of accounting. Like I do okay. multiple... It's like you, know, you go see a GP, you don't expect them to know the ins and outs of it's cancer. Yeah. Yeah, You'd yeah. go to an oncologist, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's lots of accountants that specialise in areas, but I do more general accounting for small, medium-sized companies, um, sole traders, one, two-man band, limited companies. That That's my niche as mm. such. It's micro-businesses. It's because I know that these businesses mean everything to these people yeah. and I want to help them continue that and do the best they can to earn their money without having to pay the majority of it over to HMRC yeah. mm. because they don't know the best way to set themselves up mm. to uh, to keep as much money that they earn in their pockets. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And how many people you got working for you? Uh, there's at the moment it's me plus four. Yeah. We've got somebody new starting on the first of March. Okay. Uh, so it'll be me plus five. And one of these is your a good friend of yours. She is. Vic. Yes. Hello, mm. Vic. <laughs> I know Vic. How hard is that for a friend of yours that you've known since? How old? 
We were four. 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 Oh, yeah. Now you're the boss of that person. Does it affect your relationship in any way? Or do you have to put friendship at the door and then... I'll tell you her answer after. No, she did. <laughs> <laughs> She's texting. I, to be honest with you, I think it's all about just setting those boundaries. Yeah. Um, generally, as soon as we leave the office, we don't talk about work anymore. Mm. Um, and it, it's similar because I ha also have clients who are friends. Yeah. And they will, you know, come around for dinner with their families to my house. Um, if what? we're at my house at a weekend... On a Sunday having dinner, yeah. I'm not going to say, you still haven't answered my email. Like, right. I'm not going to say that to them <laughs> no. because that's the boundary they... I've put in place. Yeah. Work is during work hours and, and personal is is during the rest of the mm, hours. That's your so. boundary. But do they ask you questions? They could, I would. I know I would. Because I just don't know when to shut up. <laughs> that's very true. You know, but if I think of something, I will forget by Monday. Don't you know? invite him around for dinner. That's, that's, that's well, she the never main has. point. She never has. <laughs> Um, no, to be honest, I think it's just uh, I'm like, I'm quite a, um, a a confident, stern person as mm. such, a, and like I say, a, where I put my boundaries in, I think people understand those and and um, and react to those accordingly. Mm. But yeah, I, if somebody wants to ask me a tax question at the weekend when they're around having a barbecue or whatever, then yeah, I'll answer your tax question. But um, I'm not going to give you professional advice. No. Yeah, in no. my house at a barbecue in a social setting mm, absolutely. Um, if, yeah if, if it comes to the point where someone's like oh you can help me with that can't you I say yeah yeah make an appointment at my office and we'll talk about it <laughs> and then they know actually this yeah, is, yeah <laughs> that's the end of yeah. the conversation yeah. let's move I even on. have yeah. people you know on so I run two different Facebook profiles one for me yeah. my personal life yeah. and one for me my business persona yeah, yeah. Um, don't get me wrong like I'm not I don't I'm not completely different no. but in, You've got to keep it separate. Mm. I'm a professional, yeah. you know, and I take my profession really seriously. Yeah. Um, I And, you know, one of my professional ethics is not to bring the accounting industry into disrepute. Mm. Um, it's a very difficult as well to trust somebody as a professional with your financial situation if you've seen them... Um, you know, <laughs> drunk and falling over at a party yeah. at the weekend. You yeah. know, yeah. not that I get drunk and fall over at parties at <laughs> yeah. the weekend, but you know what I mean. Not every yeah? weekend. No. No. Yeah. Um, oh, I completely forgot where I was going Sorry. with that. So what happens to my mind? It's sometimes. about you separating the two Facebook. Yeah. So yeah. Your persona. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, so if somebody then um, in my personal life pops me a message on Facebook, oh, well, you know, I've been looking for somebody to help with my tax return. I don't. I don't tend to start with the whole. Oh yeah, what's up then? Mm -hmm. I just say link to my pop yeah. pop a, an email to info at aconnect.co.uk or call us on oh um, one six three four five four zero three four zero. My colleague Hazel will book you into my diary, and then we can have a chat about it. Mm. So then they're like, right, okay, I got it. She wants me to mm. email or call, book an appointment, we'll chat. But I'm not prepared to. No, and that's, that's right. also another part of our professional ethics is that we're not set, we shouldn't be seen to be going out and giving free advice willy nilly mm, no. because you know you the advice for one person is not the same as the advice exactly. for another yeah. person. Every single person's um, situation is entirely individual and different. And it just takes that one person to say, "Oh, I said to Natalie this, and she said this, this, and yeah. this for free." And mm -hmm. then someone else will say, "Well, you did it for her for free. What about me?" Yeah, you know? well, it's different. And well, it's, it's not even just that. It's, it's more that you know, if, if you're in a social situation and somebody says, "Oh, I can claim for cups, can't I?" Mm. as a as a tax deductible expense, and I go, "Oh, yeah, mate, no problem. Yeah, mm. you can do that because you run a cafe, so of course exactly. you can yeah. uh, <laughs> you can claim for mugs." And then I'll have um, then all of a sudden. Um, an electrician will say, well, you Can told I Rachel can. she could claim for yeah. mugs, so I've claimed for mugs. Yeah, but, goes, yeah, but you're an electrician, you don't need mugs. <laughs> he's using it as advertisement, not as... Um, that, not it was as just an example purpose. because the mug was in can front I, of me. But... Right, for a podcast, for cherry wood podcast, <laughs> then, here's the question. <laughs> can I claim for mugs? Absolutely. Yeah, Good, that is marketing have. and advertising, <laughs> that no yeah. problem yeah. at all. There you go. But that, it's just things like, um, you know, I'm an accountant, I don't need a drill to do what I do, mm. okay? So for me, a drill is not a tax deductible expense, but for an electrician... They need a drill to yeah, do what they yeah. do, okay? Yeah. So that's why it's very difficult as well because um, a lot of people out there think that there should just be this one universal list mm. of things that you can claim. You can't possibly write that list no. because it is different for it's every industry specific. Every, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because generally the rule is you can't go out and claim lunches, food and drink mm. and things like that because 
that is not uh, there's a rule that HMRC have called wholly and exclusively it's not wholly and exclusively for the purpose of running your business no you are buying food and drink wholly and exclusively for the purpose (laughs) of keeping yourself alive because you have to eat to live Mm. however (laughs) there we go (laughs) what did you say what time did you say oh I don't know I'm way off I think it lasted a hell of a lot longer than I thought it was very specific it was 5.37 yeah did you say we didn't start dead on the time though did we no, we've been chatting more than... Yeah, yeah we have. Yeah, we must have started yeah. early. No, I think yeah. it, was, it was a lot longer than <laughs> I said. I think. Sorry. Sorry. Um, oh, I completely forgot what yeah. I was saying then. I don't know why we do that. It messes, <laughs> it, it messes every guest right up. It messes every guest. Oh, gosh. Where and I'm sorry, it's I have a really loud laugh. It's hereditary. It comes That's right. my mother. Like, I can't help right. it. He's got the headphones in, so you're yeah, fine to me. me <laughs> 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 um, okay, so you've said about your girls that you work with. Yep. Um, which one's your favorite? No, I won't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not do big. They, <laughs> do they have specific? <clears throat> I'm going to say not talents, but do they have specific areas they specialize in, or do that? Or are I they say, a bit broad? I think, like, like, I think yourself? that the best way to lead a team is to understand the individual strengths of each individual in your team mm. and make sure that their role plays to those strengths. All oh, right, so Vicky just makes tea then. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's shit at making tea. <laughs> That Hazel makes the best tea ever. Vicky does not. Uh, now, if I was asking somebody to pour me wine, then <laughs> that's where Vicky shines, right? Uh, oh, yeah, so, is. yeah. Um, okay. But, yeah, so I think that, you know, I know that Vicky loves getting a big, messy pile of receipts and then turning it into a be- beautiful, organised folder and that everything's, you know, everything's on the system and everything's like got a green tick because it's all ticked off nicely. She loves turning a big mess into something really lovely and organised. Okay. So bookkeeping is absolutely where she shines, mm. right. you know. And Vicky came on originally um, as an administrator, um, but I kind of thought there must be, you know, let's see what else you can do because mm. she had always ever done... Uh, she had only ever done administration up until that point. So she never really knew what her strengths were mm. because she had never tried anything. So gave her a bit of bookkeeping, tried around a bit of tax. You know, we're, we were expanding and uh, and then we found her strength and we we run with that. So Brilliant. Mm. So people are still sending receipts in then? Because you suggest yeah. like... QuickBooks Quick or books something like that, don't you? Yes. Other, I mean, other ones are available, there's... but I don't know them. <laughs> Zero is the zero zero. Uh, That's what, sorry. There you go. Zero <laughs> zero QuickBooks or all them types of things. Yeah, before I get God, done. there's so many. Yeah, zero QuickBooks, Sage, free agent. Now, um, if someone was to come on board with you, mm-hmm. would you give them a bit of zero training or QuickBooks training so they knew yeah, so what again, they were doing? That's Vicky's area of expertise. All oh, right, okay. Uh, she uses zero day in day out. Yeah. Um, for bookkeeping tasks, she's also really good with people. She's really good at understanding and relating to people and just making things nice and easy for them to understand. Mm. So, uh, she's our first port of call when new clients come on. Look, like I say, if somebody comes on, they've already got a system in place, got a QuickBooks or whatever. We'll work with it. Mm. You know, I'm not into bringing people on board and going right now. This you're change. our client. Yeah. I'm going to change you to this and this and this because at the end of the day, an accountant is meant to help complement your business Mm. and not just completely go in and change everything to suit them. And take a bit of load off, really. Yeah, absolutely. And and this is the thing, if if somebody is used to using QuickBooks and they're happy using QuickBooks and it works for them, why why fix something that's not broken? Mm. You Mm. know? So you just let them let them go with it and work with them. But yeah, generally if we've got people coming in that don't have a system at all, um I I say, look, zero is the system that we prefer to use, but there are others on the market. Go out and take a look and I'll send them a few links. They look at some systems. If you want to go with zero, we can get it sorted for you. And then you can come in and do some training with Vicky or we can do it online Mm. uh, because she'll do some Zoom training if people can't make it to the office. Um, But yeah, generally, we've had really good feedback as to uh, the kind of level of support that we can offer in terms of handholding and guiding through how to get your day-to-day bookkeeping done or, you know, there's some people that are like, do you know what? I know how to do bookkeeping. I just don't want to do it. Um, their time is better spent doing whatever it is that mm. they're good at, whatever there is that runs but, their business. I mean, we've, we've spoken to a few people, haven't we, that said, look, my industry is electrician or painter mm-hmm. or decorator. And they said, I don't have a clue about yeah. accounts, hence why I have an accountant. Yeah. Because they said, I just give them my receipts or give them all my paperwork and say, 
that's your job, you know, mm-hmm. because they have not a clue what they're doing, don't they? So yeah. obviously that's where you step in and, and do your magic, really. Yeah. So if you were to get a pile of receipts mm-hmm. and there's a re- few receipts in there, you if think... Vicky were to get a pile of receipts. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I forgot that. You're the one drinking the wine, aren't you? Absolutely. So <laughs> if Vicky was to be handed a pile of receipts, she's like, I don't think you should be claiming on this. Yeah, so we're very open up, you know, we're straight talkers, okay? Mm. We are not yes people. Um I'll tell you exactly how it is. Yes, you can claim this. No, you can't claim this. Have you thought about claiming this? Um, but with receipts, and there could be hundreds and hundreds. Sorry to jump in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there could be hundreds and hundreds. And you may have read it on there and thinking, why has he bought this? And he's got a good justification yeah. of why he's bought it. Should they be writing notes on the receipts to, to say why he's got it? Like I say, depends on what kind of system you run. Generally... Um, we're, we're quite a way away now, I think, from getting the bag. The only times we get bags yeah. of receipts is if we are doing bookkeeping for people mm. throughout the year. Mm. Um, the sole traders that uh, come to us for just sort of end of year taxes, etc., yeah. um, we tend to send them a spreadsheet. So we've got a template and we'll say, all the receipts you got at home, just type them into this spreadsheet. Right. Send us the spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm not an auditor. It's not my job to mm. sit there and go through each um, each receipt and tick it off to the spreadsheet. If you've put it on the spreadsheet, I'm taking it as gospel that you have a receipt that backs that up. Mm. Right. Because in the event of a HMRC investigation, if they run down the list and go, right, I want to see the receipt for that one, that one, that one, you need to be able to provide Proving. those receipts. Yeah. So yeah. have you ever been in that position where you've had to help someone out that has been audited by HMRC? Yes, I have. <gasps> yeah, yeah. I Is it scary? Um, because that just that just panics me. The sheer word HMRC yeah. are coming to investigate, it, which is um, the hell out of me. It can it can be over very quickly mm. um, because they'll what they'll do is they'll open one year. So they'll say, for example, um, twenty two twenty three. That's the tax returns that have just gone in. They'll mm-hmm. say, right, your twenty two twenty three tax return flagged on our system for whatever reason. Normally, a flag is because um, something either income or expenses have dramatically increased from one year to the next. Um, if your income has increased dramatically, but your expenses have also increased dramatically in line, yeah. then that's not a flag. Mm-hmm. But if your income has gone way up and your expenses have gone way down, or your income has gone way down, your expenses have gone way up, then that's Why? normally the yeah. one that they would flag first because um, they're, they're thinking you're not paying enough tax. Mm. They'll open one year. They will ask for your backing documents. So they'll ask for bank receipt, uh, bank statements. <laughs> how many, you, sorry, how far back you got to go with these receipts? So just the one, just the, well, six years is what you're meant to keep. Six years. But what right. I'm saying is yeah. they will open one year. If they are satisfied that the return that you've put in agrees to the backing information you've sent them, then they'll close mm-hmm. your case and say, fine, that's it. You're doing everything right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. If they find significant errors in that one year, they will open up six years previous and then they will go back six years. Right. God. And it can be very... You're always going to find it difficult. Times. Yeah. Well, years and years ago, there was a guy, um, <laughs> I was talking about this the other day, actually. Um, he was investigated and I said, I sat there and I said to him, look, sorry, playing put no, with you there. <laughs> you do that all the time anyway. But carry on. <laughs> I said, look, I am on your side. Okay. I think some people think that accountants are on the side of the tax man. We're absolutely not. We're just trying to help you fit in with the rules that the tax yes, man has yeah. set, yeah, um, just to protect you. I need you to tell me everything. Do you have any form of income that we haven't put on your tax return? <laughs> no, 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 no. I haven't got a penny. You know, driving some clapped out old Ford Transit that's falling apart. Um, and he was absolutely determined he did not earn any money other than what he had told me and what we were put on his tax return. So then HMRC have come in and then they've said, don't know why you bothered driving the transit van to the office today because we know you own a Ferrari. <gasps> we also know that you spend £3,000 each month on online gambling. <laughs> Your figures don't show that you earn £3,000 a month. So where did that money come from? And I just looked at him. I'm like, <sighs> like if you had just told me, I could have helped find some kind of game yeah. plan here yeah. some yeah. kind of strategy but no um so when you say the hmrc come in do they physically come in that this was sort of 10 12 years ago yeah. so yeah they physically came to the office things are adapting now do you know certain um, people in the hmrc that are usually the ones that do the, these things or is it always different no always different right 
Yeah, always different. Um, and generally now they'll do it electronically. So like I say, they'll send you a letter. Yeah. Uh, they'll ask you to provide information. They've started using emails over the past couple of years. Um, <laughs> I say HMRC in this country, their their goal and their ultimate aim is to be the most um, tax, uh, the most uh, electronically advanced tax system in the world. Right. <laughs> I, I don't understand how they think that they're going to get to that goal at any time in the next 20 years because they are well behind a lot of other European countries. Um, yeah. Because I, I always get that email come through. Oh, HMRC have said that you've got this much in tax. Click on this link. And I'm yeah. like, delete. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh there's my no gosh, way. Yeah, the scams. The scams <laughs> drive us insane. And do you know what? They're getting a lot better now. We've had mm. some letters come to our office um, that look very much like HMRC yeah. letters, and they come Scary. in brown envelopes as well. They yeah. send them in in brown envelopes. It's so easy, though. Um, it? It's so easy. Yeah, we we looked. Um, my colleague Hazel was like, "This, I don't that know. There's something not right about this yeah. letter." And then she compared it to another HMRC letter that we had for a different client. She was like, "No, this is definitely a scam." This mm. one, like, mm. she was like, "It's crazy how similar they look now." Yeah. If you were to fall for that scam, you have insurance that would cover that problem or whatever it is you've fallen for or do you see what i'm coming for or is it a client um, that sent you that letter no that was it was a letter so a lot of our clients use our office as their registered office address oh right so, okay um I so hmrc write to my clients but it comes to our address so we deal with the post when it arrives oh, right, okay oh. um, I you could do that yeah so it was the hmr hmrc writing to my clients saying you owe this much money in tax mm. yeah. and you would open it on their behalf and we opened it and we dealt with it. it. Was like, well, no, they don't owe any tax, and this is in fact a, a fraudulent um, yeah, letter. Yeah, I've had emails like that all the time. That's yeah, and That's text messages. Just, yeah. Oh, and I just think, mm. no, we're up to date on our tax. Yeah, we're, no, we're, we're quite, fine. We're not we're too bad yeah. on when to put their tax in. Yeah. When yeah. payments are due in, everything like that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so when these things come through, I'm like, nah, that's crap. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore yeah. it. Mm. Problem is, though, that there are so many people out there that aren't as uh, savvy yeah. that just go, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, like, yeah. I owe tax. I've, I've had quite a few phone calls. Like, oh, I had a text and they say that, that I owe money back. I'm, no, no, you're, you're not. not. <laughs> Sorry yeah. to burst your bubble. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to give you some, yeah. I'm gonna ask you some scenarios now. Go so, um, Oh, no. <laughs> Someone's purchased something on, say, Amazon. Yeah. Right? It's for their business. Yeah. They get an email confirmation of the purchase. Yeah. The thing gets delivered. There's no receipt in that. Is the email confirmation a receipt? But you can download invoices from Amazon. Oh, can you? Mm. How'd you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so make notes, right? So make notes. A personal scenario. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, of course yeah. it's a personal scenario. Yeah, yeah. You can download invoices um, from so from, it's your, the email, from the orders is, page. Is the email, purchase email that they send I mean, it? yeah, that... it is. But I mean, if you're VAT registered, then it wouldn't be enough. That wouldn't be enough to reclaim any VAT. Okay. But it's enough to prove a purchase. Yeah, can yeah. you explain VAT to us? <laughs> how long have you got <laughs> uh, i mean that in its simplest form is um you are an agent of hmrc you are a collector of taxes you will charge that on your services to other people and they will pay you but then you can reclaim all the vat on all of the costs that you've had where you've paid that and then you pay the difference to hmrc so let's say you've um you've invoiced somebody a hundred pounds. Yep. Okay. And you've added that of twenty pounds. They've mm -hmm. paid you one hundred and twenty. Yes. Okay. So you are now holding twenty, 20 pounds on behalf of HMRC. Okay. okay. You then go and spend twelve pound in the shop. Okay. Yep. So that's ten pound is what you bought. Two pound is that. Twelve pound is what you've spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. You with me yep. so far. Yep. <laughs> Let me write this down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've charged someone hundred pounds. Yeah. Then I've given them. I've charged them twenty pound VAT. Yeah. Then I've gone to the shop, bought something for twelve pounds. Ten pounds. So ten pounds. Ten, ten pounds. Two pound. Plus two pound VAT. Yeah. Is it? So now what you would have to pay to HMRC is eighteen pounds. Is eighteen pounds. Right. That's okay. how it works in its simplest oh, form. Right. Okay. So you collect all of the VAT on your invoices that you've charged people, and you count up all the VAT on all of the costs that you've spent mm -hmm. and the difference between the two is what you pay over to HMRC. So anything you buy, you should really put on, let's say you're doing it on a spreadsheet and then you should put in what it actually cost you and then... Yeah, and then VAT in a separate column. Yeah. So Most, um, is everything you're purchasing got VAT on it? No. Right. But 
anything that you purchase that has VAT on it will have a VAT breakdown on the, on, on on the invoice, receipt, yeah, on the receipt. Right. Mm. Even so, even so, like B and Q, they'll have a little VAT, VAT yeah. section at the bottom. You know? Yeah. So it's a certain earning, isn't it, to become VAT registered? Is that correct? Yeah, eighty-five thousand in turnover. Wait, why am I writing this down? <laughs> You're getting free advice. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to start an account. See, I'll test you on it later. Yeah. <laughs> so eighty-five thousand VAT. Right. So here's another scenario. You have got someone coming in. He's a sole trader. He's been doing it for four years or something. He's a brick loan. No, he's a carpenter. Yeah. Um. He's gradually building up his business. Mm -hmm. He's been doing his receipts and all that, but he's come to you mm -hmm. and he's not sure whether to stay sole trader mm -hmm. or go to what limited? Yeah. God, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I've got something in my eye now. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? So how would you advise him on whether he should remain sole trader or is there a limit that he's definitely got to leave? There's, a whole, leave, there's got a whole bunch of questions that would be asked at that point in time. And again, this is where it's the whole one size doesn't fit all. It's a lot of liabilities approach. there as well, isn't there? Because there's a new corporation tax system in as of 1st of April last year. So your corporation tax rate now depends on the level of profits you're making. So that will ultimately impact how much you can, so how much corporation tax you're going to be paying, how much you can take out the business personally, um, and you need to weigh one up against the other. Um, you know, it's also how many other forms of taxable income you, do you have? Is it just what you're earning from the sole tradeship, or do you have rentals or pension or savings investment income? Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's not just uh, if you earn this much, you should be limited mm -hmm. because there is a whole bunch of other things that, that need to be taken into account as well when making that decision. Um, also, it, you know, there are some people who it's only ever just going to be them in their business doing their thing. Mm -hmm. They don't want to expand. They don't want to, you know, advertise and get hundreds of clients. You know, they're happy with the little client base that they've got. It, they don't want staff. They're not going to earn over 85. They don't want to be. So they're not going to ever be that registered. But so everything those that generally would would stick to being sold. In trade. theory, if their insurance is correct, it is incorrect. Everything they own is liable, though, isn't it? There is that. Yeah. yeah. So by being a limited company, you have what's called limited liability. Your liability to the company's actions is limited to the amount of shares you hold in it. If it is, if you have one one pound share in your business, then that is where your that liability you can... stops. Mm. Mm -hmm. right. as a sole trader if you uh if you do something wrong somebody decides to sue you similarly you know the tax man uh i've had some i had somebody speak to me the other day who hmrc investigated one year they weren't satisfied uh that the answers given in that one year were correct they've now opened up six more years um and this guy's facing a 90 grand tax bill uh, as a sole trader they can take his house well they can yeah. put a charge on yeah. the house for that yeah um, mm. If he was limited, he could just wind down the company. Yeah, couldn't because HMRC would stop him from doing that. But you know, they, that's what I mean is that there are there are different ways to limit yourself from that. So, could you still be under? Is it thirty two grand as well to profit? Am I thinking that? Mm? Am I, is there a there's a line, isn't there, from going to sole trader to? I know we've just crossed well, this, and you said it, there's not, but yeah. there is on earnings, isn't it's, there? It's less than you, it's less than you'd think. It's it's about sixteen, seventeen k in profit, right? Um, but then you have to then weigh in additional accounting fees and all the additional hassle it comes yeah. with yeah. having because as a sole trader, you only have one legal filing requirement every year, and that's your self assessment. Mm. And that's it. Yes, one tax return. That's it. You're done for the year. As a limited company, mm. you have to have. Accounts to company's house once a year. You have to have something called a confirmation statement to company's house once a year, which confirms to them where the company's operating from, who's in charge of the company, who owns the shares, that kind of thing. You also got a corporation tax return that you need to file once every year with HMRC. You also need to add to that um, a set of accounts, which is they're called it's called IXBRL tagged accounts that need to go with that um, with that tax return and then also you have to do your own personal self-assessment as well so you've gone from one filing requirement to four filing requirements that's where you guys you, come in which is yeah. why the fees you know the the fees to have a limited company from an accounting perspective is is much more than a sole trader because yeah. there is much more work involved of course is there anything out there that you can protect yourself so you are a sole insurance. trader so the insurance would protect you mm -hmm. so they don't sue you and take your house. Yeah, without. but you know what yeah. it's like with insurance. Yeah. It's, they look at every yeah, reason not get, to pay, pay you out. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. You know, they look at any reason but to not pay you out. But there's no 
clause there's no, nothing out there that says mm. because like, i i have what's you. called professional indemnity insurance it means mm. that if i give somebody advice in a professional capacity they take that advice and then something goes wrong and then they say do you know what i lost out loads of money because i took your you. advice yeah. um i'm going to sue you that's what my insurance is there to mm. cover mm. um Similarly, you know, we have public liability insurance yeah. that if somebody walks into my office and falls over and hurts themselves, that insurance will cover mm. that. Mm. Um, if you really think about any other things that people might sue you for, there's not really a great deal, I think. Well, yeah. I think I keep thinking drone, right? I have five million pounds drone cover. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you get trained on how to fly a drone and things yeah. like that. But what if, you know, all of a sudden there's a gust of wind, it sends it into a motorway. Uh -huh. That's always part, that always crosses my mind. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't be flying it over the motorway, but if it sends it into the motorway, then what would happen then? Mm. Do you know what I mean? They say, well, the wind was too hot, but it wasn't, you know, yeah. it, little do things you know, like that. Do you remember that movie with Billy Connolly in called The Man Who Sued God? No. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so it was all about, I think it was this guy who lived on a houseboat um, and I think there, there was some big storm, hole inside of his boat, boat went under. Yeah. His insurance wouldn't pay out. And the reason his insurance wouldn't pay out is because they said it was an act, act of God. Of God. Yes. And he said, well, fine. He said, if God is to blame, I will sue God. Right. And he did. And then he had a, this big class action where loads of other people said, you know, my house got hit by lightning and they wouldn't fix act my roof God. because yeah. it was an act of God. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, loads of them sued God. It was, I think, oh, God, I want to say must be it was old. early 90s, I think. Right, okay. I have to look at that. Um, yeah. But, right yeah, it was down. a bit Billy Connolly. I think you're right up your street, actually. Billy Connolly <laughs> movie, The Man Who Sued God. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so they would have to... Yeah, but you've got warnings on your on your phone that come up about the wind, haven't you? Yeah, if yeah. it's strong. So mm. is it there must be a way of proving that. Yeah, if, but it could it, be anything. A kid could go past with a kite. It, it could be something really silly that throws yeah. it into there that the insurance said, Well, you shouldn't have been anywhere near well, we wasn't anywhere near there. You, do you know what I mean? It's 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 a hard one. It's just me over worrying well, as it usual. Is, it is, isn't it? So it's, it's a worrying thing. It's you know, it's the same as car insurance. You know, you might um crash the car and then they might say well you should have been wearing glasses yeah, <laughs> yeah. wearing yeah. your glasses exactly. you know They're, if insurance companies want to get out doing something they'll try they'll their hardest it. Yeah. to do it yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the problem isn't it so yeah like yeah. I say like with drone drone licenses and drone tests and everything you feel you're up to date with everything yeah but there may be something there that you've just not quite remembered in, in the test or something like that and you're you're breaking a rule that you don't even know you're breaking do you have to do that every year or is it just uh, you're trained? I don't ask me that on, on here, Rach. <laughs> um, I think. He does it every I, year. Yeah. He keeps up to date with everything he's meant to. Um, it's just like I do 40 hours of CPD every year. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you ask that on here? I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. I I've only, had it, I've only had it for a year, but I think. I think the I don't, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Research, to that. Thanks for that. <laughs> now everyone's going to be able... <laughs> giving him some homework yeah. now. The thing is, it all depends on the on. There's different rules for different weights of drone. Mm. So if it's over 250 grams. This is completely different rules. You can't even fly it within 50 meters of people. That's mm. what the law is as we talk. You know, as we speak now, it might be different in a few years' time. Mm. So I have a, a drone that's 249 grams. <laughs> so you can go a little bit closer. Yeah. Well, you, sometimes you need to with bride and groom, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you don't want to cut their heads off. But, yeah, you can oh, go absolutely. a bit closer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's get off drones before I, <laughs> I wish I hadn't mentioned it now. <laughs> but what do you do, uh, apart from accountancy, what are you into? I have three children. Oh, I right. have two teenagers and a toddler. So that pretty much takes up all of my spare time. Mm. Uh, to be fair. All boys, all girls? All boys. Oh, all boys. And a husband. So technically you've and got four. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, four children, really. <laughs> Um, so a lot of our weekends is taken up with football. Right. Um, my, so my, I was, I want to call him my middle child. He is my middle child, but he was my, he was my baby for quite some time. It was 10, there's 10 year age gap between my second and my third. Oh, right. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah. So my kids are 15, 13 and three. Aww. And the three year old. Uh, the three-year-old is doing all right now because I know he, is. he, he was a few born problems. With quite a few health problems and yeah. yeah oh, oh my gosh, listen. yeah. He was uh, he was born in June 2020, so in lockdown. Yeah. Um, he was born with something called a unilateral hydronephrosis of the right kidney. Oh my god! <laughs> it took me a long time to practice Looney how to say that. I'm gonna have a go. No, Looney, no. no. <laughs> Loon, Looney natural hyper 
Hypophyrosis of the kidney, did you say? Unilateral. Unilateral. Hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis. Oh, I've got that one now. <laughs> Lunilateral. <laughs> hydro. <laughs> fuck it. Right. Yeah, it's not um, well. Yeah. So that was June 2020. He then contracted sepsis in October 2020. Oh my god. So he was gosh. only four months old at that time. No. And then in February 2021, he contracted Kawasaki disease, which sounds really cool. You know, motorbikes, motorbike. Kawasaki, yeah. but actually it's not very cool at all. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and is that a disease you can get rid of? Uh, you mean curable? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah but sometimes, sometimes they just that, sometimes they just lay there. Don't they? <laughs> yeah, well, just get rid of no, it. Do you know what yeah. that disease? That. I don't think I have that. I get rid there of you that. You can have it back. <laughs> yeah. No, he. Um, yes. Yeah, so he had. Um, uh, we were admitted. Uh, we were at Medway Hospital for three nights, and then they um, ambulanced us up to the Evelina in London, um, which is on the side like Guys and St Thomas's. Mm. And, um, and then we were there for a further two nights. Uh, they wanted to keep us for a, a third night, but by then I had been wearing the same set of clothes for five days straight, sleeping in them. Um, you know, I, mm. I stank. I was, <laughs> I was annoyed. I was because they, they, they took us from Medway hospital where I'm, you know, my whole support system is in Medway. Yeah. Mm. Ambulanced me to the Evelina with a sick baby mm. and nothing. I, yeah. you know, I couldn't just, get my husband to come in and have a coffee with me or something in the middle of covid as well yeah in the middle of covid um so i you know i got i got really annoyed and and it's not that i pulled him out you know when he needed to be in there i said is there any medical reason to keep him here for another night and they said we just want to make sure Mm. i was like Uh, okay but all the tests that you've done up you know in the past few days have said that you know, 95% certainty yeah. he's fine to go home. I said, look, I'm not a stupid person, mm. okay? The only reason that he got cured as quickly as he did is because I got him to the hospital as quickly as I did, yeah. as soon yeah. as I yeah. noticed the symptoms. Yeah. Um, and so I said, look, I'm not a stupid person. If any of these symptoms come back, I'm going to take him straight back to the medway. Yeah. Mm. Like, I'm not going to keep him at home if he doesn't need to yeah. be here. Mm. I just need to go home. I need to be built with my support system and Absolutely. my family need to see this baby. Yeah. So what did that hospital, sorry to jump in, what did that hospital have that Medway didn't have? Um, so the Kawas- Kawasaki um, in causes enlargement of blood vessels around the heart. Okay. So they have to do an echocardiogram. Right. And bearing in mind he was only 19 baby, months yeah. old at the time, mm. his heart was really, really small. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Medway just don't have the right imaging okay. machines because right. uh, probably because they don't need to give mm. babies echocardiograms mm. on a day to day, you know, mm. and it's probably a very expensive machine. And because the other you know, is a specialised children's hospital, it is, in London. so rather yeah. than do it there and mo- move you back to yeah. Medway, yeah. they just kept you up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. And that's the problem sometimes is that in the you know when you go into the NHS and they give you uh, unrealistic unrealistic expectations sometimes because I was under the impression we were going up to the Evelina having this echocardiogram coming, coming back. back. Yeah. Mm. And then I ended up being there for two years. If yeah. they had just said to me, you're going to go there for probably a few days, maybe more, yeah. then I could have prepared said, myself. Said, yeah. I need some clothes. Yeah. I need this, I need that. Yeah. Oh, so bless. you wouldn't give enough information. No, but, um, but thankfully, I mean, he started, um, he started 2022 we under the under the watch of three different consultants, uh, one for his kidney, one for his Kawasaki, um, and one that was following up from his sepsis. Uh, and by the August, all three of them had signed him off. Wow. So, uh, touch wood, he is perfectly healthy now. Oh, okay. brilliant! So, so oh, have good. they said that that could come back later on in life? Or well, this was the thing. This is why we were we were under their watch. Like he had to go up every four months for another echocardiogram just, just to, to check, check yeah. uh, that there was no more enlargement of the vessels around the heart. Oh, uh, uh, so yeah. So uh, similarly with his um, with his hydronephrosis of the kidney, he had to have a regular uh, what scans were they? Ultrasounds, yeah, uh, to make sure that things were the right size, etc. Oh. Um, but yeah, so yeah, going back to what I do at weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my my middle child. He uh, he's part of a football team. He plays for uh, Gillingham Town under 13s. Okay. Oh, wow. um, yeah, they are doing so well. I'm so proud of him, and I'm so proud of that the entire team. He's um, so my husband is um, a, a Kent FA referee. Oh, is he? Yeah, he gets some abuse on the weekend, yeah, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he uh, he tends to ref their home matches, um, and his brother, who my brother-in-law, is um, my son's coach. Right. So he's coached the team 
And um, yes, yeah, I just said to said to my husband the other day, like this weekend they had, um, so they have their all their league games, but there's also like different cups that run throughout yep. the year. Um, and they were in the semi final. They had a semi final cup game at the weekend, and they it was a tough game, but they won two one. So they're now in the final. Brilliant. This is oh. their second season of playing together as a team, and they've got to the final of wow. a of a cup game, which is like amazing. Um, but just looking at looking at all the boys like from the beginning of the season till now at the beginning of, s- of the season they were you know a swarm of bees around the ball <laughs> no, well, they, they were a bunch of individuals yeah, they yeah. were a, a whole bunch of individuals playing playing on a pitch mm. whereas now they are genuinely a team a a world each yeah, team. yeah. yeah. <laughs> they trust each other they're passing the ball to each other um my son went into the match on sunday with groin strain he, he probably should. Is that one playing. of his friends? <laughs> <laughs> he probably shouldn't have been playing, but he, um, you know, he did some exercises and he was just like, "Please, his, his coach is um, is is his uncle, so he's like, please, Uncle Pan, let me play, let me Aww. play. I just want five, just give me five minutes." And he's like, "Okay, right, I'll give you five minutes, but if you're hurting, you come straight on." Yeah. yeah. Uh, he he ended up playing the whole game, but um, and my son plays centre back, so um, the left and right backs you could really see because they knew. That he was, you know, slightly injured. Yeah. They were kind of Supported stepping him. forward and yeah. stepping oh. in a bit more to yeah. like shield him. Yeah. Which I thought was just so heartwarming that, mm. you know, mm. and that's what they do. Mm. They they just all really the come together. So yeah, so we're looking forward to the final. I don't know when it is yet. Um but where's it played, the final? I don't know. I oh, don't right. know. I think from what I've uh, what I understand, previous finals have taken place at um Rochester United's ground or at Chatham Town's ground. Oh, right. That's what we live I near think, Rochester yeah. United. Yeah, I think mm. they do um all the Cup games in one day, yeah. Right. All the I cup finals, only, yeah. um, just do a whole day of cup. Finals. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I've got a load of sons. We've got tons of them, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I've been to a well, few I, cup finals, and I yeah, lip, you're right. They knock them all out in one day usually. Yeah. Our little one has just within the last six months started yeah. to get into football, oh. and he knows not not much about it, but he's like, I want to play football. I want to, I want to do this, mum. Yeah. So we sent him to this team that we know, and this team are really good, aren't they? Yeah, Northfleet, very good team. Northfleet. Yeah boys and they're amazing and yeah sorry i didn't know if i was allowed to promote them <laughs> she just promoted her team that's very oh, true actually yeah, sorry. um and i don't think they've lost a game this, they haven't lost a game all season game. but yeah. and they are Ted's just training with them yeah, until he gets in the team are... and he hasn't got any f's to give ted he doesn't yeah. he doesn't he sits on that pitch i looked at him look, look at him the other day on practice he's just spinning around <laughs> just spinning around in circles <laughs> and then when the match started the mock-up match He's put his hoodie over his eyes. Oh <laughs> that was one. That was like, one Ted, week. What are you doing? <laughs> the week before, he was really good. Because he, he, I think they're trying to get him to be a defender, aren't they? So yeah. he's like, right. So I've got to do this. And but the, these boys have been training together for two years, yeah. and then obviously they get the odd person that comes in. So he's like, right. So I've got to now defend this, and I've got to copy this, and I've got to follow yeah. him around. I'm like, yes, so, yes, do this. <laughs> and then like the coach, the, like it's seven to eight. They just lose interest halfway through. <laughs> I remember my my eldest son's when he joined the team they had this match going on because back then you, they, they could be competitive at that age yeah and um because my eldest son's 30 i know i don't look it but he's <laughs> yeah you definitely do look old enough to have 30 year old thanks, <laughs> thanks, <darling. laughs> thanks for that um and um they're playing the match and i'm looking at these two defenders i may have even said that on this podcast before and i and these two defenders one of them's going like that and going to the other person and the other one's going like and the manager's gone, look, it's like the, the goal has just been scored by the other team. The manager's gone, what are you two doing? He said, well, he's, he's planting the flowers and I'm packaging them ready for them to be taken away. <laughs> <laughs> just playing their lovely yeah. little imagination game in the middle of it's a football It's in the match. middle of a football yeah. match. Yeah. And yeah. And, but it's hilarious, though. It just used to crack me up the way they just don't care, these kids. But yeah. So you say, like, obviously your husband gets a bit of abuse for being a referee. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah. So some, some games are really, really tough as well. I can imagine. Um, <laughs> and also, I think because of the, um, because of the family relationship... I think that any team that loses um, against uh, against my son's team, it's an easy thing to blame. Yes, isn't it? of yeah. course, yeah. Well, of course we were going to lose. The referee is like, yeah. you know, yeah. the the manager's brother. It's, no, <laughs> he does have some integrity. He yeah. can actually call a fair game. I used um, to run the line a lot, and yeah. I used to do the offsides. I used to make sure those offsides were. Definitely offside. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't keep my flag down. I'd rather say it was offside 
if I wasn't sure, yeah, just so the other team would realise yeah. I wasn't. Oh, um, my, my dad had to do that against my cousin's team <laughs> once, and he actually gave what was it a, a penalty, penalty to his against own against her, yeah. and he was like, I, I had to. I yeah. quite, there was nothing I could my do. My husband's had to do. He's had to give a yeah. penalty and he said, against their side yeah. as yeah. well. And, and he's just like, oh, I really do. It's like he said, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, that's oh, a I've penalty. Got to I've decision. got, I've got to do it. Yeah. I have to. But even the managers sort of don't like the fact you've just done that. Even you know what I mean? It's sad, really. Yeah. yeah, it probably was, it but is, still, but, yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's human nature, especially yeah. in, in a team sport like that, that yeah. even if you know rationally in your mind that was a right call, yeah. you just want to fight it. Yeah. Don't you? Like, <laughs> yes, I, know it was a, I know it was a right call, but it's not fair. It's that's not right, fair. That's right. And it's so easy to get it wrong as a ref because you see it once. You see mm -hmm. it once and it's a split second yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know? So and this is the problem is that, that where so many referees are getting so much abuse in the game, it is um, the number of referees is dwindling. Oh, definitely. Mm. Um, or you'll get the people that <clears throat> go and qualify as a referee just to help their kids' team. Yeah. And then when their kids finish playing, that's it. That's that's it. it. Yeah. They, they stop refereeing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there is a big thing amongst, you know, referees. They just, they guess, I uh, say, they really do get the short end of the stick. And, yeah. um, I think people, more people need to realise that without referees, there would be no game. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and, and this is Tough the thing. Old is job. That, that I think that some, um, I don't know if it was the Kent FA or if it was, you know, the, the big FA, Hi, yeah. but they, um, they were saying that it needs to come from grassroots up, mm. the discipline, whereas I disagree. I think that it should come from top down mm. because these children are watching... These Premier yes. League, yeah, yes. Premier League footballers yeah. shouting at referees and going, "Oh my God!" and waving yeah. their arms yeah. right in the referee's face. So they think that that's acceptable oh. behaviour. How is that um, not happening in rugby? And it's happening exactly. in football. I'm like, yeah. If you talk back to the, I think once rugby, you talk back, that's it. You should be off. Yeah, they get it will thin, stop it straight thin away. Thin bin, don't yeah. They? yeah, I played in a match once, and there was a girl referee. Right? What, football or rugby? Um, football. Mm. There was a girl referee, and she was sending people off left, right, and centre. Yeah. So our team just shut up. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just shut up, and the other team were losing players all over the place. But it was early nineties, and like yeah, she there, called no, someone no over. Girl, like we're on the subs bench. <laughs> she called someone over on the mat in the match, and she's called him over. And some my mate went, "Do you think she's going to ask him if her bum looks big in there, those shorts?" <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she didn't hear it. <laughs> It got away. Can you say sexist? <laughs> yeah. But it was early. It was early 90s. She was one of the first. Actually, she's the first girl referee I've ever. I think mm. it's very mm. difficult as a woman to be taken seriously in a male dominated industry. Mm. I've had it in accounting for my entire career. Mm. My yeah. entire career. I say I started in the accounting industry 20 years ago. Yeah. And there was a lot of women in accounting, but all at admin level. Bottom level. Yeah. You know? You had your secretaries, your people running payroll, doing a bit of bookkeeping. Mm. Hardly saw anybody. I mean, I'm not saying that there wasn't. There was obviously people out there. But in all the firms I worked for, the people at the top were men. Mm. Um, and they didn't... I mean, I I worked for somebody once and um, there was this thing about... Um, it was right in the centre of Maidstone. And so we used to do the Maidstone Park and Ride to get to work. So we'd mm. all park, get the bus into the office Um I was pregnant with my second child and um, there were some park limited parking spaces underneath our office building that were reserved for sort of managers. I was only six months away from being a manager because I just had one, one exam left to take. Uh, and I was like, look, can I just, because it's getting a bit much, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with the belly, doing the park and ride and all of that. Um, well, it was your choice to put your career nine months behind. <gasps> Oh my god! Could you imagine if that was said in yeah, this day and age? Yeah, no. god, so that was what fourteen years ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but that was the attitude, yeah. and that's what I've had to fight against. And then people were, uh, oh well, if he said that, that's okay, isn't it? They and it's, it's the it. eye rolls of, oh, well, she'll probably want to come back part time. Mm. No, I'm very serious about my career. Yeah. Actually, I can still be a mother and have a full time yeah, career yeah. and Absolutely. be serious about what I do. Yeah, and do it well. Just because I have children doesn't mean that I now am no longer able to function as an accountant. Yeah, yeah. like absolutely. But that that was the the general um, but now, attitude back this in the day. day. And age, husband and wife shared a load, really. Now, didn't they? Oh my gosh, yeah. Like I could not have pushed my business as far as I have mm. had it not been for the support I have of my mm. husband mm. for sure without the, to the we are a team yeah you know and it's not like you know there's some people that 
you know, these are the blue jobs and these are the pink jobs in the house. It's no, if it needs doing, we just get it done. Mm. Um, I've you know, just realised I'm better than you at most of the pink <laughs> and, and blue. <laughs> oh, <poor. laughs> um, going back to football <laughs> and, and women, in, women in football. Oh, do you know why it, they're so far behind? Women are so far behind in the game, not as in skill, mm. but why it's not as good. Because in the war, <coughs> men went to war, mm. they let the women play the football, yep. and they took over the football, a bit like the same, I think the same happened in baseball it in America. In America baseball. And then after the war, they banned women in England from playing football. Did you know that? They banned really? them. They banned women from playing football. Then how did it start up again? Then? Well, got, obviously, eventually, they were... They released that ban, but women got banned from playing football in England after when the war. they came back and said, "When the men no, about right, the men about now, now and there's no longer a, a football league association yeah, for women." No football. <gasps> well, and, well, and, I and never. again they sat there and went, "Oh, okay, then that's yeah. absolutely fine. Walk all over us." <laughs> yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Well, I don't know what the women. I've got an accountancy question. Talking Go about then. all this sort of. <laughs> rude behaviour and the abuse that your husband gets. Have you ever had that being an accountant? <laughs> Shouted at or abused? Yes, or? yeah, yeah. I, I, I've had some times where, you know, I'll call somebody, I'll say, you know, I'll send them over their information. Let's say they've got a 12 grand tax bill, right? So they've earned significant money to have a 12 grand tax bill. Mm -hmm. Well, that can't be right. <laughs> Why don't you think it, it's right? Well, I, I bought a van. Yeah, I've got the van in there. <laughs> Well, well, no, no, it can't be right. Can't, well, I haven't got it. Well, you had it. You've just spent, spent it, it on something you shouldn't have spent it on. Like I, I was quite clear that, you know, to be prudent, you should be sticking 20% of what you earn aside for your tax bill. This is no, no yeah. I like to say, and this is the thing is that I, I pre, I, I similar, and I don't want to say that I treat my clients like children, but in a way where you have to, Give somebody all the building blocks. Yeah. Mm. Prepare them I've told for what's to, to do come. This. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that when they turn around to go, mm. oh well, no, I didn't actually put any money aside. A lot of them now have got to that point where they go, oh, do you know, I didn't put the money aside, but I know I should have because I know you told yeah. me to. Yeah. yeah, you know, as opposed to some years ago who used to say to me, well, I haven't got it. You didn't tell me to put money aside, and it's. Okay, you can only I, hold their hands I'm not so your far. mother, yeah. and I shouldn't have to tell you how to deal with your own money. Yeah. Like, if you earn money, you're going to pay tax on that money, yeah. and that's that's what's called being an adult. As, yeah. as soon as our money comes in, thirty percent goes to a different mm. account, and we mm. just stick it in a different account. Mm. And then you have to kind of forget it's there, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I mean, um, that's that's not our money. We mm -hmm. don't touch that money. Mm -hmm. so on the not... odd occasion, if something came in company wise that I was purchasing, I may use that money. Mm. <clears throat> but then I'd re replenish it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think it's um, it's blame culture, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and I think especially with like Gen Z, uh, are very much they look for something to blame yeah. other than Absolutely. themselves. It's, yeah. I think millennials we tend to take accountability. Like, yes, I messed up, or yes, I know that this needs to be done. I'm just going to do it. Yes, that's millennials do. Yeah, <laughs> you're not a millennial. <laughs> Yeah. Are you a boomer? <laughs> I'm, I'm Generation X. I'm, I'm the coolest oh, yeah, name yeah, of yeah, those. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm the coolest yeah, name yeah. of those gens. Yeah. Mm. I was quite shocked that I was actually a millennial because I didn't think yeah. I would be. But yeah, when when we actually, because we, we looked into it, didn't What's we? It? Yeah. it is about 87, isn't it? Um, I think it's from 80s onwards. Oh, I don't know. 80s up to mm. the 90s, I think, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Yeah, my sister like is that. as well. Yeah. So, yeah, and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm a millennial. <laughs> Your husband's Greek, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> Greek Cypriot, yeah. Ah, oh, right, Cyprus. Yes, okay. the Greek part of Cyprus. We've Don't just, get them confused. We've just booked <laughs> Athens. Very angry about we've just it. booked Athens. <laughs> you should have brought him in. I'd have started asking him about Athens. <laughs> <laughs> the done is not. Right, so you're Greek? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, right, okay. What's it? That's that question. Got it. Yeah. Do, do you go to um, Cyprus a lot? Um, we used to try and get out there at least once a year. Mm. Um. Because you know he's got family out there, but then it's it's not really a holiday. It's more just yeah, going Visit. and going and yeah. visiting, uh, and you know you spend a couple of hours at each person's house. You get shoved cake down your throat, and they, it's not just like cake; it's cake, <laughs> <laughs> and they give it to you, and then and then you feel really bad if you don't eat yeah. all of it or at least most of it. And they're like, 
you know, it, it's that. Have you yeah. ever watched the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding? I, I have done yeah. years. So ago. there is a part in the movie where you know the the, the Greek mum goes to to this guy who's marrying into the family, and she said, "Ian, are you hungry?" And he says, "No." She went, "That's fine. I'll make you a sandwich." Yeah. <laughs> like that's what they do. They yeah. feed. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So then you, you eat like ridiculous amounts of cake, mm. and then um, I don't speak the language. I I, I can pick up little bits, yeah. but my husband speaks the language. So he'll sit and talk to them, and I'm just sitting there. Eating cake, yeah. just looking and nodding, going. Mm, mm. I was exactly. It's exactly the same as the Italian culture as well, because yeah. I, I had a previous boyfriend who was Italian. I've got a load of previous and boyfriends. Again, <laughs> similar to you, he'd sit there and have the conversation with the family, yeah. and then they would bring out pasta and this and this and yeah. breads, and I'm like, oh, okay then. And then yeah. you can't say they are very no. similar you cultures. Can't say yeah. no. So you're sitting there going, mm. but like. But to start with, they would bring out a lasagna. Yeah. And they were like, this is your starter. I'm like, oh, my God. Lasagna. That's dodgy, you know. That's filling. <laughs> lasagna. I love, I love it, it, but it's filling, isn't it? It's oh, a it main is. course. Yeah, and yeah. then it would be something else, some main course and something else a pudding. Like, oh, I've got to eat this now. So I knew if I'd ever go around to a big yeah. family dinner to not eat for about three days beforehand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Blimey. Feeders for sure. Yes, yeah, definitely. definitely. Which is a good job I'm married into the family because I'm a feeder as well, yeah. in all honesty. Like, if someone comes to my house, that's it. I'm cooking lots and lots of I'm so cooking enough. Do, we go around there. We go around there. Do you do a lot of Cypriot cooking or Greek cooking? Or? Um, I've tried a few dishes. Um, I do. I, I, I need to make more time um, to spend with my mother in law so she can teach me some more oh. stuff because. Uh, my my husband keeps on wanting these dishes and I'm like, I, I have no idea how your mother makes that. I'm gonna have to go find out. <laughs> it's a blue job. Yeah. It's a blue job. Yeah. <laughs> we did a we did a mother in law cooking lesson. Yeah. <laughs> we did a video for your mum's friend, didn't she? She it was an old eighties video, we converted it yeah. to digital and then she sent us a thank you and a load of Cypriot. Yeah, because she is from Cyprus. She yeah. lives in Cyprus now. And yeah, she sent us like, all like a massive thank you hamper and it was all this different. This nutty Cypriot. thing with jelly around yeah. it. Like yeah. it, it was and we weird like, stuff. And do we eat this? Yeah. <laughs> we were like, it's like a bush <laughs> tucker trial for yeah. us. <laughs> we were sitting there going, how are we meant to it? Because it was yeah. on a string. That was it. It was yeah. on a string. Yeah. We were yeah. like, I know do we hang this up? Do we eat I can't remember what they're called. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Mm, I've seen my mother-in-law's made them a few times. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the olives. And oh, it was so nice. Mm-hmm. It was all sort of, and the breadsticks. And oh, it's lovely. <laughs> Right, oh, yeah, done. I'm getting into it. <laughs> yeah, she's getting I'm hungry, hungry now. You've got to take her for lunch now, yeah. Right, let's have your, what would your ideal clients for you? Who do you want to? Um, well, like I say, we deal with, we deal with micro, what we call micro businesses. So sole traders, one, two man band, limited companies. Yeah. We tend to try and stick to Medway based businesses yeah. where we can um, because we like to be, you know, we like, we like it when people can just drop in on us. Yes. You know, yeah. um, similarly, we can just drop in on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're that, around the corner or they can pick up the phone yeah. if they need us. Um, we're there. And where are you? you dragons. We are dragons. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we're inside. Uh, w- Dragon Co working itself is within the St. George Hotel. So uh, you walk in, there's a tablet on reception and you just let somebody know you're there and then somebody comes up and gets you. It's like a magical system. It is good. It's, yeah. it's, good. it's a nice it's place to. To work, it's actually. a lovely, it's a lovely workspace. I mean, Roland has done just an amazing job down there. So, um, Roland Stanley is the owner of um, Dragon Co Working, and it started off as just a few serviced offices and some co working space. You know, just some hot desk in space, and it has just grown and grown and expanded. But what's amazing is that it's not just um, renting an office. Mm. You are buying into a community mm. yeah. you know we go it's out and eat, there and everything yeah, we yeah. go out and eat lunch at the same time you know everybody kind of shares knowledge and experiences um you know, it, it's because being in a small business can be quite isolating especially mm. if it's just you in your business mm. um to be part of a co-working space then opens you up to a whole community that you're that you're there every day mm. you know it's like you are one department in a much larger organization uh, and and it really does have that feel about it. They do social events, they do networking events as well, so you can expand your own network just by having mm. office space there. Because you, you did one. I think Vic invited us the other day, Dan. Yeah, Dan, you. But we were working or something. Oh. Yeah. So once a quarter okay. they do an event called Waffle, which is mm. great. That's it, Waffle. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. the whole point is that you eat waffles while waffling. Ah. Uh, they also do there's a one coming up called uh, medway business meetup i right. think uh the next one is uh specifically about 
young entrepreneurs so we don't really oh, well, turn up. anymore unfortunately <laughs> okay, turn up. yeah we are no longer classified as young <laughs> we'll just push tilly in front of them yeah. <laughs> um but yeah they get some really good uh really good um turnouts actually mm. 50, 50 60 people turning up oh. at these events so it's a really good place to uh do some, do some free networking yeah. as well so you don't have to pay for it um but yeah it's nice as well being part of that community because like um orchard employment law They've got one of the offices um, in in the co working space, and uh, quite regularly, you know, there's a very thin line between accounting for payroll and employment law. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you can tell me how much your you want to pay your employee, and I'll process it on a payroll. Yeah. If you ask me how much they have to be paid. I'll just no, say yeah. they have to be paid national minimum wage for the hours yeah, they're yeah, working, yeah. you know? Yeah. If you say, how do I calculate holiday on a zero hours contract worker? Oh, uh, I could yeah. look it up for you. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, that's more of an employment law thing. Yeah. You know? What do you side. have to put in your employee's contract? I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. We're, and similarly, you know, if, um, if she's trying to, let's say, calculate redundancy payment or something and wants her, wants her figures double checked. You know, we're, we're back and forward quite a bit sharing mm. information uh, between us. And have had I not been a part of Dragon Coworking, had she not been part of Dragon Coworking, we wouldn't you have wouldn't that have connection. That, yeah. mm. uh, you know, we wouldn't have that uh, that advice ready on the doorstep, yeah. you know. Oh, that's really nice. Brilliant. Which is good. There's lots of people that collaborate there as well. Mm. So it's Dragon Coworking. And what, how do they get you on the internet? <laughs> uh, well, us we're www.aconnect.co.uk. Um, mm. Aconnect.co.uk. Mm. <laughs> okay. Only fans? No, no only fans. <laughs> well, Vicky's been trying really hard to find a way of getting one where she doesn't show her face. <laughs> She said, if I can figure out a way to do it without showing my face, she went, I'm all over it. If nobody can figure out that it's me, let's do it. (laughs) If I found that she was on it, I'd be doing posters of it. All right, Vic. (laughs) Vic, what are you doing here? (laughs) Recognise the elbow. I know those feet. (laughs) Yeah. Recognise those feet anywhere. (laughs) Brilliant. Thanks for coming on. No problem. Thank Thank you very much for having me. That's it. Yeah. We we said thanks and we're actually finished. Uh, if you want to um, come on, it's www.cherrywoodpro.com um, forward slash podcast. <laughs> slash podcast. I thanks. love the way you started that with a um. <laughs> you um had to, I don't know www. what. I'm, um. I don't know what I'm doing. Thanks for that. Thanks for the abuse. <laughs> Cheers. This podcast has been brought to you by Snug Dubs, Camper Van Hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. At snugdubs.co.uk. This podcast was brought to you today by Austin's Eatery on Station Road Strood. Try the Viking Challenge.